Why Warren Buffett's profits have dropped in the last years? Buffett's Glorious Returns Warren Buffett is one of the best inventors of all time, boosting an average annual rate of return of 20.5% since 1965. However, over the past decade, his company Berkshire Hathaway has lagged slightly behind the S&P 500 index. More importantly, in early 2019, Warren Buffett revealed that he had hard times in trying to be the S&P P500. So what happened to the Omaha Oracle? Before we start, we should mention that just because Warren Buffett has been struggling to beat the market doesn't mean he's doing badly at all. Over the past 10 years, Berkshire Hathaway has produced a solid 11.08% annual return, while the S&P 500 has returned 11.379% without reinvested dividends and 13.537% with reinvested dividends. So while Warren Buffett lagged behind in the S&P 500, he didn't necessarily perform poorly. That said, the fact is, Warren Buffett's returns over the past 10 years are only a fraction of what they used it to be. So let's take a look at some of the factors driving this, starting with the size of Berkshire Hathaway. Berkshire Hathaway size Berkshire Hathaway is currently the 12th largest company in the world, with a market value of $543 billion. Generally, the company's executives and shareholders are ecstatic with the company's growth year after year. But in the case of Berkshire Hathaway, this has become a major problem. See, Warren Buffett has more money than he can actually invest. In May 2020, Warren Buffett was sitting on $137 billion in cash. And the problem is, Warren Buffett is a worthy investor, which means that he likes to buy companies with solid finances and a lot of growth left over. However, value companies are not that common and generally have market values of at least in the billions of dollars or tens of billions. For an average citizen, that wouldn't be a problem, but when you have $137 billion to spend, I think it's clear how quickly it can turn into a big hurdle. Warren Buffett revealed that, at this time, there are only a few hundred American companies that are big enough for him to make a reasonable investment, many of which he already owns. Something that made value investing even more difficult for Warren Buffett was market sentiment over the past year. As we all know, the pandemic caused a massive sale on the stock market in the spring of 2020. However, Warren Buffett didn't buy into the break, as he did throughout 2008 and 2009. In fact, he sold all of his airline shares near the bottom of the crash. From a rational perspective, this make sense, as the aviation industry will likely take years to fully recover. Most airlines will likely end up burning billions of dollars, and many will likely not survive the pandemic. Despite this, investors raised airline shares anyway. For example, let's take a look at Southwest Airlines. Between 2007 and 2020, the share price fluctuated around $50. During the pandemic, shares dropped to $23.87, but since then, the stock price has almost fully recovered, reaching $45 today. In this perfect world, that would mean that Southwest is operating at about 80% of the capacity it operated before the pandemic. In fact, in the third quarter of 2020, Southwest lost $1.2 billion, indicating that that is far from fully recovering at this time. Unlike the 2008 crash, stock investing is much more accessible to the average citizen, especially with the increase in investment applications. As a result, many investments of potential value were tendered before the respective company actually started making a turnaround. 
making it nearly impossible to find real value investments in the market. In addition to struggling to find where to put his money, Warren Buffett has also been outperformed by another segment of the market, which are growth stocks. Stocks growth In the last decade, investors have migrated to companies with enormous future potential, even if they are overvalued on paper. For example, one of the most popular investments in growth companies was, of course, Amazon. On paper, Amazon did not have the highest profit margins. To be honest, they had terrible profit margins and Amazon Web Services increased its retail deficit over the decade. However, Amazon has seen tremendous growth in terms of revenue, market dominance, and prime members. As a result, investors chose to rate Amazon based on its future profitability as opposed to its current profitability. Another popular example of a growing company is undoubtedly Tesla and its prominency prospects in terms of the electric and autonomous vehicle markets. In any case, much of the growth in the S&P 500 lately was due to these growth stocks, while value stocks underperformed the market as a whole. Moving on, Warren Buffett also made some bad investments. As we discussed earlier, Warren Buffett limited investment opportunities in the market, so he changed part of his focus to increase current investments. In 2015, Berkshire Hathaway and 3G Capital decided it would be a good idea to merge Kraft and Heinz both of which were monstrous food companies, so combining them would only make them stronger, right? Well, while this works in theory, it doesn't work so well in practice. Soon after the merger was completed, the two companies decided that they should help the other company using its strengths. Heinz had a global reach, while Kraft was primarily focused on North America, so the two decided to expand Kraft's popular subreddit into international markets. Meanwhile, they also spent significant time trying to get resources to lower prices and reach more people. However, the focus on international expansion and cost reduction caused the mega company to lose sight of the main market trends, such as the trend towards healthier foods. This loss of focus, along with some poor management decisions, has caused Kraft Heinz shares to drop to $30, which is just a third of where the shares were just a few years ago. Clearly, even the best inventors have their fair share of losses, despite decades of experience. And that brings me to Berkshire Hathaway's next big deficit, which is long history of investing, increasing diversity. Warren Buffett has led Berkshire Hathaway since 1965, and over the many decades, its diversity has grown slowly but steadily. Diversity is great when you're looking to build a secure investment portfolio, but at the same time, diversity greatly hinders the investment portfolio's growth rate. Risk and reward are directly linked when it comes to investments. As a result, it is not surprising that the reward has slowly diminished as the risk has diminished. Now, Berkshire holdings aren't as diverse as the S&P 500, but they still hold up somewhat. As of September 2020, Berkshire Hathaway had 49 different stakes. They continue to hold significantly more capital in companies where they have higher conviction, such as Apple, Bank of America, and Coca-Cola. However, it does not take much diversification to significantly limit growth rates. Take Apple, for example. Berkshire Hathaway holds a colossal $137 billion worth of Apple shares, which represent about half of its portfolio. In 2020, Apple shares rose a massive 70% total. If the entire portfolio were just Apple stocks, which is not a good idea, then your portfolio would also rise to 70%. But what if only 50% of your portfolio were Apple stocks, and the rest were average stocks that match to the market and return, say 10%? In such a scenario, the overall return on the portfolio over the year would be 40%, which is still a phenomenal return. 
However, it is only a fraction of 70% and this becomes extremely clear over time. If both portfolios start at $100, after the first year the diversified portfolio would be only $30 behind the undiversified portfolio. But if this phenomenon continues for 10 years, the diversified portfolio starts to drop significantly. At the end of 10 years, the diversified portfolio would be $2,892, while the undiversified portfolio would be a staggering $20,000. As you can see, while the diversified portfolio had rates of return higher than half of the non-diversified portfolio, the diversified portfolio ends up with less than 15% of the total return. That's why Warren Buffett and most top billionaires hate diversification. In fact, Warren Buffett said, diversification is a protection against ignorance. That makes very little sense to someone who knows what they are doing. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't diversify. But if you're looking to beat the market, a concentrated portfolio is essential. And while Warren Buffett is well aware of this principle, he hasn't been able to do much about it. He is at a point where he chooses to diversify or keep the money in cash, which is even worse. So, as Berkshire Hathaway grew, Warren Buffett was forced to diversify, which substantially hurt his earnings. Becoming the market, at the end of the day, you haven't figured it out yet. There is a broad theme in all of this, which is that, over time, Berkshire Hathaway has become more or less the market itself. In the early days, when they were small, agile and focused, Berkshire had to enjoy gains of 30%, 40%, and even 50% a year. But, as they grew in size, they became too big to effectively invest all of their cash. As a result, they were forced to diversify their portfolio and settle for smaller earnings. In the end, while it appears that Warren Buffett's glory days are slowly drawing to a close, there is no doubt that his investment and legacy philosophies will live for centuries. What do you think is the main reason for Berkshire Hathaway's declining returns? Please, share your opinion with us in the comments below. That's all for today, fellas. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, subscribe to our channel, leave your like and share with your friends. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.